The UK has recorded the highest daily coronavirus death toll since the start of the pandemic. 1,325 more people have lost their lives. To add to that grim figure, a record number of new cases, more than 68,000 positive tests were recorded in the past 24 hours. Hospitals across the UK are now under severe pressure, with some treating many more patients than they did during the first peak in April. London and the southeast of England are currently being hit the hardest, with one senior NHS leader saying the situation is off the scale, calling it a winter crisis like no other he has ever seen. Here's our health editor, Hugh Pym. Two brothers enjoying a swim on a foreign holiday. Exactly a year later, one of them died with COVID-19. He's a big chap, there's no denying that, but he could swim all day long. You know, he was running on Christmas Day. James remembers his brother David, who was 36. They both tested positive and were isolating, but David's condition worsened overnight and he didn't survive. We were going to sit there and rough it out. Well, it didn't work for us. And my advice would be, not that I don't want to scaremonger people, and I don't want to be dramatic, but I think people, if you're in that situation, if you're sat at home and you're starting to really struggle for breath, ring 111. A post-mortem will try to establish whether there were other factors in David's death. As more lives are lost and case numbers increase, London's mayor has declared a major incident with a call for financial support from the government. Hospitals are so busy that ambulances are delayed handing over patients, with waiting times up 36% in the southeast in December, according to data leaked to BBC News. COVID patient numbers are rising in other regions. Extra staff have been drafted into this intensive care unit in Wolverhampton, including dental specialists. I didn't really think about how hard it would be, um, even patient roles to um, end of life. Um, it's somebody's loved one. And this Nottinghamshire hospital says the pressure is intensifying. We're beginning to see that huge increase that London has seen. So we've got 160 patients, COVID in our organisation. That's nearly double the number that we saw in the first wave. Critical care is exceptionally busy and the colleagues who work here are tired, they're fatigued and they're worn out. The latest survey of community infections by the Office for National Statistics suggests that last week in Northern Ireland, one in 200 people had the virus with case rates no longer decreasing. In Scotland, it was one in 115 with case numbers on the increase. In Wales, one in 70, though case rates were coming down. In England, one in 50 had the virus. With case numbers on the increase, the worst affected area was London, with one in 30. The latest R number range, 1 to 1.4, was higher than the previous estimate. Anything above one suggests the virus is accelerating. Vaccinations continue, though there was a long queue and waits in the cold for people in priority groups invited to this clinic for their jabs. It was confirmed that a third vaccine has been approved by regulators. It's made by the US company Moderna and the government's ordered 17 million doses, though they're unlikely to be available before the spring. Right now, senior health officials are focused on the spread of the virus. They're worried there are more people out and about than during the first lockdown and they think there could be more than 100,000 new infections per day, including those who haven't been tested. Hugh Pym, BBC News. Well, let's look at the latest government figures in detail. There were 68,053 new coronavirus cases recorded in the latest 24-hour period. The average number of new cases reported per day in the last week is now 59,344. Hospital admissions keep climbing. On average, there were 28,756 COVID-19 patients in hospital in the last week. And today's record death toll, 1,325 deaths. That's people who died within 28 days of a positive COVID-19 test. It means on average in the past week, 809 deaths were announced every day. It takes the total number of deaths so far across the UK to 79,833. Our medical editor, Fergus Walsh, is with me now. They're, they're truly terrible figures, and the awful thing is that it's going to get worse. It will, Sophie. There are now 31,000 
COVID patients in hospital across the UK. That's up 50% since Christmas Day and 10,000 higher than at the peak in April. And coronavirus cases are surging. And that has yet to show up in the hospital data because of the lag between infection and people falling seriously ill. So the number of deaths seems certain to keep on rising. Now, I've seen firsthand this week the pressures in intensive care. The stress on hospitals and on staff is greater than at any time during this pandemic. But there is hope. A third COVID vaccine approved today. The Moderna jab is 95% effective against COVID disease. The immunisation programme with the Oxford and Pfizer jabs will be ramped up from Monday. But more than 2 million people a week will need to be immunised if the target of 15 million being offered the jab is to be reached by mid-February. So difficult weeks ahead. The numbers in hospital won't start to fall unless people behave like they did during the first lockdown, Sophie, keeping their distance from others and washing their hands. And tonight the Prime Minister said he urged, he said compliance is now more vital than ever and he urged people to stay at home and protect the NHS. Fergus, thank you. Well, for those who are most sick, those whose lungs have not been helped by a ventilator, there is another alternative. It's called ECMO. They're specialist intensive care life support machines which pump oxygen into the patient's blood, allowing the lungs to rest. There are only six NHS centres in the UK that offer the treatment to a few dozen patients, but now they're under pressure to take on more. Our health correspondent Sophie Hutchinson has been given rare access to an ECMO unit at the Royal Papworth Hospital in Cambridge. They're the sickest patients we've ever seen, even for patients on ECMO. Is everybody ready? The patients are, are very poorly um, and in bigger numbers than we've ever had them. These are among the very sickest patients with COVID-19 in the country. And this ward is their last hope. Their lungs are so damaged by the disease that even ventilators haven't helped. And they've come here for the rarest form of life support from a machine known as ECMO. ECMO stands for extracorporeal membrane oxygenation. It allows these patients to breathe without using their lungs, giving their lungs a vital rest so that they can recover. And you can see here, you've got black blood coming out and red blood full of oxygen going back into the patient. Uh, I don't know. This ECMO centre was set up following the swine flu outbreak in 2009, but the coronavirus pandemic is now stretching it almost to the limit. Normally on this ward they have three patients on ECMO, but because of the pandemic and the damage that COVID-19 does to the lungs, they have many more. In fact, each of these rooms has a patient on ECMO in it. They say they have 18 patients here today and they've described it as a super surge. I know there is a limit that we will reach. I have no idea when that limit will be there. By continuing, extending, extending, there will be a, a cracking point. Hello, staff nurse speaking, can I help? And as well as treating patients, staff are working around the clock fielding calls from other hospitals. There are a maximum of around 100 ECMO beds in the UK, but there have been 3,000 requests for patient referrals. It is relentless. So patient after patient after patient, they take a long time to get better. They're the sickest patients we've ever seen, even for patients on ECMO. You know, they're not old patients, they're, you know, a younger cohort. And so it is, it is really, really difficult and we are all at times finding it quite overwhelming. Is everybody ready? Yeah, yeah we're going. Roll, ready, steady, roll. Some patients are in their 20s and 30s, most are older. They have to be strong enough to withstand ECMO and the work looking after them is gruelling. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. Things are very intense. The patients are, are very poorly, poorlier than, than we've probably ever seen them um, and in bigger numbers than we've ever had them. Um, so it's a lot to deal with. We haven't got the staffing numbers to cope with the amount of patients that we have, um, but we're doing what we can for the patients that we have with the time that we have. 
Towards the end of our filming, another two patients arrived on the ward. Staff are proud that everyone who meets the criteria for ECMO has so far been offered a bed here. But this extra pressure was hard to handle. We're not as resilient this time as we were last time because we've really had no downtime, so to speak. But we still do it because that's what we do. And what they're doing is saving lives. Through their dedication and determination, perhaps more than half of these patients will eventually awake and go home to their loved ones. Sophie Hutchinson, BBC News.